Yes. It's lovely to be here. I've come all the way from Brighton. Yes. Just in case you're wondering what this haircut is about. Um, <laughs> might be a new face uh, for some of you people. Um, don't panic. The BBC invited me here because they, they needed a beige lesbian. So <laughs> I'm just here to tick some boxes. <laughs> Not your box, madam. Just, um, <laughs> just a metaphorical box. I'm half Spanish, that's what's happening there. <laughs> I've got a Spanish mum, and uh, she lives here in the UK. It's all very legal. <laughs> she's lived longer in the UK than she's ever lived in Spain, but the brilliant thing about my mum is that she's never lost her accent. She's doing very, very good. She's doing very, very good. words she cannot pronounce. Lost and lost her words she cannot pronounce, huh? <laughs> my favourite word that my mum's never been able to pronounce is... Uh, my brother's name. Your name is named Stephen. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this, but Spanish people, any word that begins with the letter S, they struggle, right? So my mum doesn't call him Stephen, she calls him Steven. <laughs> What's his name, Mum? Steven. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Isn't it just Stephen? I know his name is my son, it is Esteban! <laughs> you don't want to mess with my mum. She's not like British people here in this country. We can be quite passive-aggressive, can't we? <laughs> She's just a very aggressive woman. <laughs> I don't know how my mum... My mum's never really coped in this country, and I think it's because, like a lot of Mediterranean people, she's quite loud, yeah? She's got one volume, it's like this. Whereas in this country, particularly if we're middle class, we tend to be low talkers, don't we? We don't like to raise our voices, do we? <laughs> Why? Because we've got money. <laughs> Let me just assume that if you are raising your voice, well, you're probably poor. <laughs> or worse, foreign. great thing about having a Mediterranean mum is they feed you. Oh, my God. She's always feeding. That's her way of showing that she loves her children, is to feed us. You know, I can remember going around friends' houses. You know, like English mums. Go around a, an English mum's house and the conversation with mum's more like this. <laughs> I think you've had enough. <laughs> my mum will feed you till you puke. in my life and my mum will relate it back to a meal that she's cooked. Do, do you know what I mean? Like, so good or bad, particularly if I'm depressed. If I phone up my mum and I've had a terrible day, yeah, I phone up my mum, conversation always goes like this. Oh, Jennifer, my God, I'm so, uh, sorry to hear that you're having a hard time right now, but you know what? Don't worry, OK? I made a soup. <laughs> Come on, you sound hungry. I made a chicken curry, I made a lamb tagine, I made a casserole, Jennifer, I made some tortillas, some paella, some curry, Jennifer, you love pepper curry, maybe some meatball, some pork ball, beef ball, aniseed ball, banana ball. You are a lesbian, you don't eat enough balls, please. <laughs> Come home. Eat my balls. Do you love London? <laughs> I love London. I feel like London is created by the people, right, who are just crazy and sexy and ambitious. I got into an Uber the other day, not bragging, and um, <laughs> I got into an Uber and the driver, he said, um, would you like to have the radio on? And I was like, oh, um, I don't mind, it's up to you. And then he said, um, well, actually, um, I make my own music. <laughs> Do you mind if I put some of that on? No, I don't. <laughs> and then he put on Drake's new album. <laughs> How often it works. I wonder, I wonder how often there's a middle aged white woman thinking, oh, well, he looks like Aladdin and he sounds like confidence personified. <laughs> Pull over and jump in the back, Nikolai. <laughs> I am, I'm having a good life. I have recently started doing yoga, which is just changed. Yes, woo for the yoga over there. Are you um, a team? Uh, come to. <laughs> I'm new to it, I'm new to it. I love it, yoga has changed my life, it's brilliant. Yoga is my new drug, and my old drug was drugs. Um, <laughs> but 
not, I'm not going to say anything positive about because it would be incredibly irresponsible. I'm not going to say anything positive about drug taking. What I will say is um, I didn't take MDMA until I was 32 and it was such a relief to know I could be happy. <laughs> It's broken. <laughs> but yoga is nearly as good. And there's no downsides. It's given me a whole new language. My favourite new word is namaste. Yeah, it's a very old word. It's very sacred. And it means the yoga has finished now. <laughs> and then you're allowed to leave. I think that the key to being happy as you get older is self-acceptance. Like, I have to accept things about myself now. Like, I'm 36, I thought I would have children by now, and I don't. In an ideal world, what I wanted, I wanted to self-fertilise. I wanted to have children that were exactly my genetics, so that I could show them to my parents and go, see, it was my childhood, they're fine. <laughs> Science can't do that yet. And then I had a crazy day last month where I just thought, I'm just going to buy some sperm. <laughs> off the internet. I've got a good job. I'm just going to buy some sperm. Guys, sperm is so much more expensive than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> it is tens of thousands of pounds. We are all wasting a valuable resource. 17-year-old <laughs> me would have been a millionaire if I'd learned how to catch it and chuck it in the freezer. <laughs> so it's a shock. I am, um, and I, I do think self-acceptance is the key. Like, there's things about myself I don't like, but I just have to accept now that they're not going to change. This is who I am. Like, so for instance, um, I don't like art. <laughs> I think art is rubbish. <laughs> I think lots of people think art is rubbish, but we're too worried of looking stupid, so we go along with it. Um, I think that the worst art form is theatre. And, right, OK, I can sense how unpopular this opinion is. <laughs> Hear me out. I think theatre is diabolical. Uh, look, I do. Look, and also, I'm aware, if you are a performer of some kind, if you're an actor, look, please don't be offended. I don't mean being in the play. Obviously, if you're the person in the play that gets to put a wig on and walk up and down and move your arms and project your voice, saying things like, um, I think you'll find you're contradicting yourself, Alan. <laughs> but <laughs> having to watch it... Dear Christ, I can't concentrate, I can't lose myself in the story. I know that it's not real because I'm surrounded by people eating crisps. <laughs> and, and they don't let you look at your phone. So all you're thinking is, well, how long has it been? This year, I did no lilt February. Thank you. <laughs> I know it sounds impossible, but you take it one day at a time. Did I have any today? No, you're a legend. <laughs> It's hard around the middle of the month, you get the cravings. It's called lilt guilt. You're like, oh, I bloody love the lilt. <laughs> it's the night where you go to the shop at midnight, you kick the doors in, where's the lilt? And they're like, we don't stock it anymore. Like, ah! Oh! So you try and make your own hooch lilt. You know, you get a pineapple and a grapefruit and you add in batteries and a horse's head. And you're like, <laughs> it's good, but it's not totally tropical. <laughs> Did that joke in America recently? Turns out they don't have lilt there. This is it. This is all I do. Imagine if this was your actual... This is... I go like, blah, 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 and you go, ah, ha, 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 money. <laughs> Can't believe I get away with it. You do actual, proper London jobs. You know, like, like blacksmith, you know? <laughs> Farrier. <laughs> Brunch DJ. The big three. <laughs> I tell you, I do not trust. People who work in offices, I know, right? What are they doing? Nothing takes that long. They're planning something. They must be. <laughs> Do you know what you know? Do you ever call in to visit your friend in an office unexpectedly? Everyone just shits themselves. They're like, what's he doing here? <laughs> lie, cover the screen, lie across the spreadsheet, get him out. Kind regards, warm regards, best, best. That's how they talk. <laughs> See the email. I know what it's like in the real world. Look, sometimes I check in your world. Oh, gross, back to showbiz. And... <laughs> no, I'm very self-aware of the level of fame that I have. I was in a supermarket recently, and an older lady came up to me, and she put her hands on my shoulders, and she said, you are vaguely familiar. And that is it. <laughs> Wrexham, and I was at an ATM machine, and a guy cycled by, and he shouted at me, surprised to see you at an ATM machine! And I've been obsessed with it since then. What did he mean? <laughs> like, on the one hand, 
is he surprised I don't have a butler to go to the ATM machine for? No, I think it's the opposite. I think I'm surprised you have any money whatsoever to <laughs> keyboard horse shit. <laughs> Here's my, uh, my greatest ever showbiz tale. I did a gig in your Milton Keynes recently, thank you, and I was staying in the Milton Keynes Hilton, and she is the least well-known of all the Hilton sisters. <laughs> I checked in after the gig at like half 12. Room 303 is where this took place. Uh, open the door, uh, TV on in the room. Not that uncommon in the chain hotels. I guess it's to welcome you. But get this, on the TV is me <laughs> playing the shitty keyboard on some show. Immediate thought is like, is this a service they provide to all guests? If so, <laughs> we, no, it's the realization, this is it. I have arrived, and I waltz into the room, down the little corridor with the loo away to the left, and as the room opens out, there is a fully naked man lying on the bed. <laughs> so they've given me the key to someone else's room. But he is lying there, watching me <laughs> on the TV, and he looks up. To think of something smart. What I say is like, oh shit, sorry man. <laughs> I could have said anything and I'd be a legend. I could have been like, oh, are you enjoying this? Ah, no boner. And just walked out of it. <laughs> the problem is the builders, my dad's mate, he's a, he's a proper geezer, proper southeast under geezer. One of those builders, you know that walk? <laughs> just walks like that. His legs like he's got a pool table between his legs. <laughs> And he walks like that, and also he's got, he's got those really thin jogging bottoms. You know those, like, grey jogging bottoms that builders wear? I don't know where they get them from. They're so thin, and it just grabs onto anything that's there. <laughs> it's just like getting stared out by his knob and balls as he comes in. <laughs> and at some time, it's more, it's more... It's weirder than him being naked. I don't know why. <laughs> it's more intrusive. He's like, hello, son, what we got here? I don't know. Everything, everything's... <laughs> Walking around like that. I reckon I could draw his knob and bollocks from memory better than mine. <laughs> so he's coming like that. And I'm like, oh, God. I go, do you want a cup of tea? He goes, yeah, 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 I'll have a cup of tea. I went, how many sugars? He went, 13. <laughs> That's not a cup of tea anymore, it's a pudding. <laughs> That's an angel delight of a tea bag, innit? <laughs> 13 sugars, I'd all make sticking it in. It's about three quid worth of sugar. <laughs> He's only come around for a quote, it's already cost me. <laughs> I put 14 in to test him. Give it him. He went, it's a bit sweet, isn't it? <laughs> Are you winding me up? You know me on 13, you greedy bastard. Oh, type two Terry's come round and it's a bit sweet for him, is it? <laughs> when are you gonna do this job? I want it done before your foot comes off, alright? Anyway, I had a Kit Kat in the fridge, right? I thought, right, let's get him back on side of Kit Kat. Right? He's into sugar. I like introducing people to new things. See if he wants a Kit Kat. Four finger Kit Kat. Like, how, how would you eat a Kit Kat? Four fingers? I've said that wrong, haven't I? <laughs> I thought you looked at me funny. <laughs> sorry, I, sorry, I said that like it was your name. I meant, well, I meant to say... <laughs> I don't know what I meant to say. <laughs> but I meant to say, I meant to, how, would you, how would you eat a four-finger Kit Kat? But I went, how would you eat a Kit Kat? Four fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, four fingers, how's it going? <laughs> Who needs thumbs, eh? <laughs> Need to smoke by the looks of things. Um, sorry about that. Um, not an ideal nickname for a young lady, is it, really? <laughs> <laughs> so what would you do? One finger at a time? Is that what you'd...? <laughs> Uh, should we start again? Should we start again? <laughs> Sorry, what's your name? Anita. Anita. Nice to meet you, Anita. Sorry for calling you Four Fingers. 
Um, anyway, Anita, how do you eat Kit Kat? That's what I was going for. One at a time. One at a time, right. One at a time's a normal approach to a fourth. <laughs> Anyway, one at a time is a normal approach to a four-finger Kit Kat, isn't it, right? <laughs> I gave this builder a four-finger Kit Kat. He picked it up, put the whole thing in his mouth at once. <laughs> Beat into it like he was eating a bun. <laughs> Dirty ogre sugar bitch. <laughs> what kind of animal is one popping a four-finger Kit Kat? <laughs>